Hello and welcome to Fin Business. We are in conversation with Lee Wolf Wallin. So thank you so much for talking to Fin Business. My pleasure. Okay. So digital wave is you know creating a lot of ripples into the financial services market. Uh, you're operating from Sweden. You're talking to a lot of global clients these days. If I may ask you, what is that one thing that you are seeing right now, specifically into mobile mobility enterprise solutions, specifically related to financial services? Well, one of the biggest trends is that our clients are now moving from just digitizing the business to actually going digital. So for them, it means really two things. Mm -hmm. One is to embrace mobility as a channel. Mm -hmm. And clients have been doing that for quite some time, but now they're taking it to a new level with mm -hmm. better mobile clients, more interaction, more integration. So we're seeing a very strong trend with banks and other financial services companies that more and more of the transactions are actually happening on the small screen. Okay. But they're not stopping at that. Of course, they're looking at how to empower their own users mm -hmm. to leverage mobility as part of a digital business strategy. Okay. And then it's usually about a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. One important thing is to continue to improve the productivity of the employees. Mm -hmm. But another thing is to also build more engagement and you typically do that around the digital workplace strategy in the organization. Hmm. So when it comes to strategy, what is the best option? Is it like, are they believing in IoT platform? Are they believing in a cloud platform? Or are they merging with both the platforms? How is it? What is the major trend in global? The, the major trend, if we're talking about Internet of Things, hmm. IoT, that is you almost always try and leverage a cloud-based platform first. Okay. You do that since it has a number of really positive things around it. Mm. It reduces the time to benefit, mm. since it's just spinning up another cloud instance and it's almost like instant on. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is that you also have the scalability. Mm. Financial services, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some uh, countries, some uh, regulators, they insist on everything being mm -hmm. in-country. Mm -hmm. So for some areas, maybe you need to do on-premise to satisfy the regulator. Mm -hmm. So what are the regulatory hurdles when it comes to mobility enterprise solutions? It's um, really one major one right now, and that is privacy. Mm -hmm. Different countries have different uh, legislation around privacy. Absolutely. You also have different uh, levels of acceptance mm. among employees in different uh, regions. Mm. So even if something is not strictly illegal from a compliance yes. and regulatory perspective, it might still be a bad idea. Yes. Since employees might feel that it's being watched over their shoulder mm. and it might make them want to turn off the device or turn off the services mm. when, when not needed. Mm. So even if it's not really illegal, you need to be careful with how much you are using that could be privacy sensitive. So what is the prevention that the company, specifically financial services companies, need to take? Because the privacy yeah. is one of the major issues like you mentioned and all the regulators to worldwide are looking into this very specifically and aggressively. So what is the prevention mechanism that the company should adopt? The, the most important mechanism is to be transparent That's what we tend to find through feedback from clients across the globe. Mm -hmm. As long as you're open with what kind of information you're collecting, what you're going to do with it, mm -hmm. who in the organization will have access to it, mm -hmm. then you are in a pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter if you're highly unionized, like in countries like Germany, or if you have very strict uh, privacy legislation, like in France. Mm -hmm. As long as you are transparent with it, you're in a much better position. Mm -hmm. The type of situation you don't want to end up in mm. is when the end users don't know what's being collected, they don't know how it's going to be used against them mm -hmm. or for them. Mm. So transparency is the best way. Okay, so what is the major thing in terms of regulation that the regulators at world level looking at it? I mean, you must have been visited many countries and you are consulting with many global clients. So what is that one thing which all the regulators want? It's really, it's really two things. Mm -hmm. One is about safeguarding the data about clients. Mm -hmm. And if something goes wrong, mm -hmm. that you have an obligation to disclose mm -hmm. what went wrong to your customers so that they are aware of the breach mm -hmm. and can act. Mm -hmm. The other one, that is around privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing that there is an increased focus on privacy. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing how 
the GDPR, the, the General Data Protection Regulation in the EU, is sort of spilling over on countries outside of the EU. Right. So the great focus on privacy is like rings on water. It's hmm. going out outside of the EU. So do you believe that GDPR will play a major role because since many companies are looking at it very seriously now? Absolutely. If we're looking at um, Indian companies, as mm. long as you're doing business with companies in uh, inside the EU, mm. you will have to understand GDPR. Mm. You will have to be compliant with it mm. or the fines will be very, very high. Mm. So it, it applies as long as you're handling any kind of information about people in the EU. Hmm. Could you please give me some illustration or if you could elaborate more on GDPR because that is one area where you know many companies and even many clients have a lot of uh, you know misunderstanding. So for example the company in Asia or specifically in India tying up with European companies. So they will have to go for GDPR? They will have to be able to treat any information they have about EU citizens in a GDPR compliant way. Hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're doing mail order from China or whatever you're doing, as long as you are handling yes. personally identifiable information about a new citizen, mm -hmm. you, you will have to handle that correctly. Mm -hmm. You will need to respect the idea that if the um, citizen wants you to erase some information, you will yeah. have to do it. Mm -hmm. Lots of these types of nitty gritty things. And what are the penalties like? Uh, we're talking about um, typically something like half a million euros, mm -hmm. so pretty significant fines. So do you believe that going ahead transactions between two countries will be also on hold or you know, will shrink a bit if the companies don't go forward with GDPR? Well, when I talk to the major Indian companies, they've had GDPR on their radar screen for over a year. Mm -hmm. they, they understand what they need to do to be compliant. Mm -hmm. It's a cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. It's like pretty much any type of regulation. It's just that this one is a little bit more difficult to live up to. Mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more complex. Many companies are specifically operating on smartphone these days. You know, going ahead, do you think this will be the train? People will not even use desktop, people will not even go to the branches of the banks, people will not go to the offices, but they will operate only from the smartphones. Do you believe so? I believe that you see a combination. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time seeing anyone doing 100% of their banking on a smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, do I see people doing the majority of the banking transactions on a smartphone? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. uh, do I see people that never go into the branch office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tend to meet banks that have clients that go into the branch office or any branch office like once every 10 years or something like that. Mm. But usually it's multi-channel. Mm. So when uh, those types of uh, end-user customers are doing complex banking, mm -hmm. they typically want a big screen and they will log into the internet bank on a PC or Mac or something like that with a big screen. If it's the day-to-day -day banking, moving money from one account to the other, absolutely, absolutely. checking if um, friends have paid them what they're supposed to pay them, mm. yes, electronic transfer using smartphones between um, colleagues and stuff like that, super, super common in some countries. And you want to stay on top of it, so you want to check your account and things like that, mm -hmm. absolutely. Increasingly, we're also seeing the smartphone play a role with credit card transactions to authorize transactions that might be flagged as uh, questionable. Mm. So, yeah. But, but if you look at digital at a you know, uh, broad level or even mobility at a broad level, payments and lendings is one of the major areas where all these you know, companies yes. as the digital payments are operating on. What are the other areas, you know, what are the other operational areas or potential areas where mobility solutions can be part of it? Yeah, digital identity. Mm -hmm. We're seeing in some countries a common um, app to authenticate yourself against the government, mm -hmm. banks, social security, uh, local government, mm -hmm. the work. So there is one identity and access management platform for, for the country. Mm -hmm. And in some countries that is something that's it's a consortium of banks that's operating that and providing that service. Mm -hmm. So yes, identity and access management is the other component mm. that's being very critical. My last question, what kind of growth do you specifically see in mobility solutions going there if you take a span of 5 to 10 years? 
what we're seeing is really an increase in the amount of apps. Mm -hmm. So we're not really seeing the use of mobility like going like this. It's already gone like this. Okay. What we're seeing is that companies, organizations that currently have like two, three mobile apps, mm -hmm. fast forward three, four years and they will have a hundred mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So it's really the number of apps that's growing. So you mm -hmm. need to invest in infrastructure to manage this tremendous growth in the number of apps. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much new technology, it's more like you get so much more of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, just a cross question on that, since you said about applications, you know, if a customer has already one application which is serving all his needs or which is catering to all his needs, why does he need many other applications? And if I'm not wrong, many global banks are coming with a platform where one application is more than enough for a customer or a one application is enough for enterprise solutions. So will that be a train going ahead that combining all applications into one? Uh, no. <laughs> it makes perfect sense to have a single mobile banking application. Okay. If you're looking at uh, one of these smartphones, mm -hmm. you're competing for the real estate of the smartphone. Absolutely. And customers, end customers, they don't really accept mm -hmm. that you want to push more than one app onto that teeny weeny little screen. Okay. If you're a bank, you're allowed to have one icon and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a company for your internal IT, mm -hmm. that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If you have one monolithic big app, mm -hmm. you have testing hell. Mm -hmm. This is a technical term. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're going to release it, you have release management hell. It just gets too complex. Thank you. Thank you so much for the insight, Thank you so you're much. You're most for welcome. It's been a pleasure.